friends, I'm Tabby. And I'm Caitlin. And today we are discussing our 2023 year in books. So excited. Well, happy new year, end of year, yeah. Christmas holiday season. Yes. We are so, so excited that we made it through another one with you guys. <laughs> Isn't that just so wonderful? Wow, we, how we rewarding. We live to see another year. How rewarding. Yeah. Uh, so many, so many good books came out this year. So many new books will be coming out next year. We're so, so excited for what that's going to look like for the reading community. Goodreads did just this super fun thing called A Year in Books. Which so- I didn't know about, but if you go back, you can like go to the previous year. Yeah. So apparently it's been a thing. I've just never paid attention to it before. Yeah. But Same. today we are going to be looking at our year in books from Goodreads. Yeah, because normally we, like, kind of do it ourselves, but who knew they did it for us? Yeah, they just ripped off our idea. (laughs) How dare they? Goodreads, you'll be expecting a call from my lawyer. For sure. First of all, what was your goal this year? Your reading goal? So, my goal, I actually dropped it down to 100 books this year instead of 150 because last year I felt like... I was reading just for the sake of like getting through a book instead of actually yeah. like enjoying it. And yeah. so I, I did lower it, but I still kind of felt the same way mm. this year. I did. I did get <laughs> to it, though. Yes. <laughs> Which we spent the last uh, 30 minutes prior to this episode getting me <laughs> caught up on all the books that I forgot to put on Goodreads. Yeah, so. it turns out Tabby, like, forgets to log 25% of the books that she reads. So that's part of her issue. Yeah, so, but I did make it by one book. Well, I, last year and this year, my goal has been 100 books. I didn't meet it last year, and I still haven't quite met it this year. And so I won't meet it this year. I might lower that as well. So far, I've read 95 books. I am currently reading, I'm listening to one book on audiobook um, when I commute to work, and then... I am also reading another one. So I have two in progress. I might make it to 100 books in the next 15 days because right now it is December I believe in you. I believe Um, in you. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. But if if I don't make it again this year, I'll probably drop it down a little bit for next year. Yeah, that's so fair. Yeah, Um, and also, in case you guys didn't know, um, (laughs) if you reread books, that does count. (laughs) Yes, you can log them. That does count. Read them. And it counts towards your your reading goal for that year. Yes. How many pages did you read? Oh, okay. So my pages read right now is 31,859. Ooh. What about you? I've read 38,539 pages. Holy cow. Wow. That's so many. And okay, this is... Ours are going to be identical for this next section, <laughs> but the shortest book we read is A Very Krampus Holiday, because it's Thanks, only 15 Katie Roberts. pages. And the longest book we read is House of Sky and Breath, because we reread those this year, and that's 805 pages. So Phew. a whopper. Goodness. Um. Yeah. So before I relogged House of Sky and Breath, my longest book I read was Lady of Starfire series, which... If anyone hasn't read that, it is giving Akatar. Like, it is giving... Ooh. Yes, like, it's so good. So I would 100% recommend that to literally anybody. The first book's called Lady of Darkness. Okay, actually, I haven't read those, so I'm taking notes here. Amazing. But that one was, like, 785 pages. Yeah, so also kind of a, a good, long... You know, sometimes I look for a long book. If I'm like, I want to be reading this for... A couple that's weeks. Like, I want to be immersed. Mm-hmm. That's a beginning of the year thing for me. By the time yeah. I get to this point in the year, like I need something that's two hundred pages. Like yeah. I need it or to less. Never, yeah, <laughs> grace my presence again. Yeah, I do get to that point as well. I get kind of worn down at the end of the year, especially when I'm not quite meeting my reading goal, and then I'm just <laughs> desperately trying to make it. <laughs> <laughs> and that uh, does directly affect our average book length. <laughs> yeah, which, what is your average book length? 381 pages. Oh, okay, mine's 335, so. 
Because, yeah, sure. those novellas really bring our average down. <laughs> they do. But, I mean, if you think about it, a book that's like 300 some pages, that's like a that's a good size book. Pretty average novel. Yeah. I mean, it's going to take me a couple days to get through. For sure. Even longer if you listen to it. Um, Are our most shelved books the same? Mine's The Hunger Games. Mine's also The Hunger Games. Okay, yeah. So wow, 10 over 10 million. million. Wow. Woo! Suzanne Collins, you wrote a freaking hit. And I wonder how many people reread them. I was going to say, I wonder if that movie coming out this year, like, affected how many people. Yeah. That's what inspired us to do those. So yeah. probably. Probably. <laughs> and then Thanksgiving with the Naughty Boss is the least shelved book at 220. It should be less. Oh, mine is even lower because uh, mine's actually, it's a rule book for the game Pathfinder. It's oh. called <laughs> Secrets of Magic. And only 92 people <laughs> shelved that book. Yeah. So 220 of you people need to reevaluate your life choices. Hey, I mean, we, we've been there. We're not judging. We also <laughs> read that book. We did read it and it was bad. It was really bad. Um, what's your average rating for this year? Um, okay. So mine's like so skewed because <laughs> I only rate books when I think they're really bad. <laughs> uh, and then I forget to rate the good ones. Mm -hmm. Um, so mine's a 2.8. Which I think is higher than I thought it would be, so. Yeah, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because I tend to rate all of the books that I read with, like, mm -hmm. the star system. But as far as, like, taking the time to write out a review, I typically only do that if I really hated, absolutely hated yes. what I read or absolutely loved it. I will take the time to write the most scathing reviews for, yeah. like, books that I are just so foul <laughs> because I'm like why did you do this to me yeah uh, so my average rating is 3.1 that doesn't surprise me because I would say the majority of books that I read this year I probably was rating three stars I think next year I do want to be better about leaving reviews because I do think sometimes they can be very helpful for people who are looking for something very specific out of a book yeah um though do I think people go a little overboard with the reviews absolutely I don't need to read the the book from your review yeah but it's but at like, least it's, to get a sense of like what's going yes, on it's like book. i want to give you the vibes i want to give you the general gist of things like if you're wanting something that's not spicy or doesn't have like like inappropriate language stuff like that like i think that's why reviews are very helpful that's so true and also um, just for good times um that's why we love to good do reads, good bad reads, reviews. bad reviews. <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> some of the books that i've left one star reviews on I feel like I'm pretty nice still, um, but yeah, usually if I'm if I'm taking the time to write out a review for a one star book, it means that it has like severely wronged me in some way, like traumatized me or yeah, really, really felt like it wasted my time, you know? Yeah, I only do it for, and we'll talk about like one of the books, but like if it's Something that I feel like is just maybe like extremely taboo or like something that I felt would be like extremely like triggering to other people, maybe like. Yeah, because I mean, they times. deserve to know, especially whenever you like get through it and you find out like towards the end of the book, like you did, like you had no clue going in. Yeah. Um. What was the highest rated book you read on Goodreads? This will also probably be the same for us. It was Fourth Wing. It, yeah, mine is also Fourth Wing. <laughs> As it <laughs> should it be. So good. It is. And I still need to read Iron Flame. Iron right Flame now. was so good. We're going to be covering oh, that, wow. though, next year. Yes, we um, are. Yeah, we should kind of, um, we'll give you the vibes of what we're kicking the year off with. At yeah, the end of this yeah we'll do that. What was your favorite book? My favorite book that I read this year. I read. Oh, man. I know. I read a lot this year. Yeah. And to be honest, so Fourth Wing is definitely up there. Sure. It is sure, sure, so, sure. so up there. I'm kind of, yeah, you know what? Because I was going to say maybe it's kind of a tie between Happy Place and Fourth Wing. Uh, but Happy Place was going to be one of mine. I mm -hmm. will say I do think that I I was much more into Fourth Wing as I was reading it. 
I loved Happy Place. They're just so different. They are. It's totally apples and oranges. But for yeah. me, I, it was fourth wing. Yeah, I would say mine's probably fourth wing as well. But Happy Place is definitely, definitely up there for me. It's just like Happy Place made me like, I don't know. I just kind of disassociated and <laughs> yeah. like, read it. And it was so good. And I loved it. Yeah. Fourth wing, like I was just so like laser focused on it like it's a different type of um feeling whenever we're reading them like they're totally different like in the way that they make you feel such a refreshing fantasy book for yeah i really liked it and i can't wait wait to read um iron flame so good yeah what was your least favorite book okay (laughs) Let's this talk about one, it. It's funny. I'm much more sure of my least favorite book was Thanksgiving with the Naughty Boss. However, I did also despise Den of Vipers. And oh, yeah. I He's really bad. would like to personally right now say that I'm angry with everyone on TikTok who has ever recommended that. Um, Yeah. So sorry that you like <laughs> knives up your butts. Like, <laughs> couldn't be me. That says a lot um, about who you are as a person. Just kidding. Love you all so much. Love you guys. Though, go to therapy. Except maybe, like, I don't love you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe it hurts me too much to love you. Maybe it's just like I have a healthy concern for you. Yeah. And maybe that comes from a place of love. Yeah, it comes from a place of love. I just can't love you. Yeah, we just just really need to distance ourselves from that kind of behavior. (laughs) (laughs) Just kind of love you guys. Um, So bad, so bad. Mine, I had two. I had two. So obviously, I think the naughty boss is terrible. Blah, blah, blah. (laughs) I read something worse. (laughs) Tell us about it. I read two two things worse. Den of Vipers sucked. Didn't like it. However, the first one that I... I DNF'd it the first time and then I went back and like kind of read the ending because I'm like I need to know what happens. Yeah. Type thing. It was Sinister Legacy. Here's the thing. This was actually my first review of the year and it was one star. And I wish it could have <laughs> been negative 10. So it's about like this girl whose father is like a serial killer and he's in prison and is on death row and they just announced that he's going to be executed, like at the end of the month or something like that. The whole gist of this book is that there's, like, a copycat killer going around murdering, like, high school students. And they're in high school as well. And so I knew I knew this going into that they were in high school. My thing is, I thought, like, perhaps they were, like, adults, like, 18-year-old, like, seniors in high school. Um, because they are doing some just not cool things, like sleeping with their principals and their stepfathers and other various folks that I won't get into here. And so, you know, I get to like a a point in it where they're talking about how they're like juniors in high school. They're like 16 and 17 year old children doing these things. And so I, I had to put it down because I'm, I'm, I don't think that's cool to write about. I don't think that's appropriate, like in any form. Um, Even um, if they were 18, like that's pushing it. Yes. Like, it's there's like a difference between adults. being in high school and, and being a hundred percent. But it's like, if you're going to write about high schoolers anyway, <clears throat> like, you're already kind of crossing a line, but making them that young, like, that's disgusting. Yeah. And so I didn't finish it, went back because I wanted to know what happened to her dad. And the ending was just horrific. Like, it was just gross. And so I would not recommend that to anybody. Um, I think the author really needs to take a deep dive into, you know, what they're into, um, cause that's a little concerning, but then the other one was Cruel Black Hearts and that one wasn't bad. It was also about serial killers. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I should stop reading serial killer books, but it's not that it was poorly written. It was just that like, it was so like gory that I was getting like sick to my stomach type thing because it's like a dark romance but like slicing up people like not even knife play but like legitimately like dismembering and like skinning people and like all that stuff I don't think it's for me (laughs) no I don't think that's for me and it may be for other people but that was probably one of my least favorite books I read 
And I think that we definitely, like, we put ourselves out there a lot this year as far yeah. as, like, branching out. I'll read bringing, anything. Yeah. We, like, really tried a lot of different things. And I just want to say that, like, it's okay when something is not for you. Like, I, I did joke about, like, Den of Vipers. Like, it I know a, a lot of people do really like that book. Yeah. But um, yeah, it just turns out some of these things are are truly not for us. Yeah, and, and these are a hundred percent just our opinions. Oh yeah, um, I don't want to dissuade anybody. Like, if you love like really gruesome serial killer books, you should read Cruel Black Hearts. Yeah, because it sounds like that was that'd be for you. yeah, that's for <laughs> you. But the other one, like, I'm just gonna say all together, like. I don't know. No, I don't that think one, anybody should really be into that. So. That one, I kind of feel like that's crossing a line that... I do stand by that writing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to write about, like, children sleeping with adults is is just... And especially in that way. Yeah, In it's that way like, where the narrative is, like... you're talking about, like, a victim or something like that, that's right. fine. But no, we went into, like, a detailed, like, scene about children, like... In that type of relationship with adults, like in a way that it was meant to entertain. Yes, like that was part of like the romance like aspect. Yeah, I hate that. Jail it was for that. Disgusting. Yeah, because there is obviously you know like a lot of things that are like written by authors that they would never like actually condone in real life sure, like think, stalking like that stuff yeah yeah like, but I think like at a certain point it becomes but pedophilia is not something that we <laughs> should ever like really joke about <laughs> it becomes like weird like who are you writing this for yeah like who who was that for I don't know sometimes like I it becomes kind of hard because you don't like we're in this like environment but I, I think it's a great thing that like we don't we don't want to kink shame people but like sometimes it's like is it enabling though you know yeah what I that's mean? something I will <laughs> I, I think I'd probably shame you for yeah like Can anything else you know let your freak flag fly like you do what you are into but if it's kids yeah or like harming other people <laughs> against their will like that's because, like, Different. usually, like, um, I would say that books do a good job of, like, when it is something kind of taboo, like, they do a good job of, like, um, definitely putting it out there that, like, this is consensual. Like, yes. sometimes, sometimes it's dubious consent. And that's a whole other, you know. Yeah, dubious consent is just, like, you gotta really tread lightly there. Yeah, like, it's obviously also something that like in real life you need to have so much more boundaries than are written yeah. into a, a book but um like I think y'all get that I think you all know that yeah I don't think I should have to keep explaining this <laughs> we do not need to keep defending ourselves about this <laughs> um yeah, listen, those some of you two. some of you need therapy and that's okay yes. and so do we and you know, <laughs> here we are if we're the first to let you know Sorry. you're welcome best friend <laughs> you're welcome um well that's my soapbox for the year <laughs> we we always somehow end up down a rabbit hole but you know what I think that's I what just the think that love. was a really important conversation we needed to have <laughs> we've had we've had a few soapbox moments over the past couple of years and I that's stand one by of them. it yeah that's one of them so now that we've discussed what we read this last year and what we really enjoyed <laughs> what we did not the past Let's look forward to books that we're um that are releasing in 2024 that we're really excited for and kind of discuss what we're thinking for next year's reading goals as well. Um let's start with some goals. So in terms of like how many books you want to read, we'll discuss that, but I also want to know like if there's any new like genres that you're wanting to like branch Ooh. out into. Okay. So you know? Yeah, let's start with like the number of books because yeah. we kind of talked about this. I feel like for me, it depends on how I feel if I make 100 books this year. I might bump it down. I'm already kind of thinking about bumping it down for I next year. I think I'm going to bump mine down. For Again, for that same reason that you mentioned at the beginning, like I don't want to feel like I'm just reading to cross things off a list. I want to I'm not read. enjoying those books. So I think I'll bump it down. I don't know how much. Maybe like 80 books. And That's exactly what see, I was thinking. Yeah, like 20 less I feel like would be good for me. 
as far as like genres that I would like to branch out into, uh, cause yeah, we did that this year a lot with like the monster romance yeah. and that was kind of fun. And I found a lot of books that I did enjoy and a lot of authors that I enjoyed as well. So for next year, maybe I know. Okay. So normally I, only like books if they have some kind of romance involved Same. in them. So, but I think there's a lot of books that have been recommended to me that are, like, historical fiction. Okay. And so I have, like, quite the list going of, like, books in that genre that have been recommended, but I don't normally gravitate towards those because, yeah. you know, they're not my normal cup of tea. But I think that's what I'm going to try to do is read some of the historical fiction books that have been recommended to me. I was kind of thinking the same thing because I do love a good romance book, but it's like, I'm getting to the point where I feel like some people are writing romance just like for the sake of it being labeled as romance. Because it's trending right now. And it's not like quality Mm -hmm. books. And I'm tired of reading just like shitty. You know, you know, who's been (laughs) letting us down lately is Tessa Bailey. I hate to say it. Unfortunately, yeah, has been bumped out of my roster. She's kind of just cranking stuff out and it's, like I DNF'd one this year. Like it's, it's not just good. not hitting. And it sucks because um, I, I love a lot of her books. And I love her as like a person. I think yes. she's super cool. She is. Um I just yeah, I haven't been into her series lately. Um, but I think I want to read some like mystery like Ooh. novels. Yeah, I really want to get into some like mystery, like cozy murder mystery type books. Yeah. Um because I'm always, like, so, like, I love trying to figure those things out, like, while I read. Mm-hmm. Um, and so those are very intriguing, but also, like, I can focus on them better because I'm already trying to, like, piece together, like, what's going yeah. on. Yeah. But I also want to get into, like, some sci-fi oh, type books okay. because Alex, my husband, he, he's not a big reader. And he wants to start reading. And so I think if we found books that we could enjoy together. Yes, and like, we can read them. them together. Yeah. Um. And so he is really into stuff like Dune and he's started like the Wheel of Time series Uh and stuff like that. So I think I would like to branch out into that genre. For sure. And I know people love Dune. Yeah. Like that would be a good one to start with for me too if I ever branched out into sci-fi. Neil Gaiman has some like really good books like American Gods and stuff like that. And so Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, that's where I might try to read some next year. Yeah, maybe I will like read one or two with you. Maybe we and, should add that to like the podcast. Oh yeah, guys. I mean, we don't hear a lot from you. Uh, <laughs> not complaining or anything. I'd love to hear from you. But let us know if there's any genres that you would like us to do on the podcast that we haven't already. Because we do, we do kind of get romance. in our yeah, we kind of get in our little comfort zone. But um, we love which is right okay. now. Let's aim for that this year. It's our New Year's resolution, you know? We're going to read some crazy out there genres. Uh, Let's fucking do it. You know what? The, like, the mystery thing kind of reminded me, like, as a kid, that's actually what I gravitated to. Yeah, same. When I was younger. And so, like, I think if I read some of those, I would rediscover my love for like it. Like, the, the Janet Ivanovich novels, like, yes. Stephanie Plum, stuff like that. Like, I love those. Same. I think they're so fun. Yeah. And so, if I could, and they're not really, like, a super romance, like, forward or anything. There is, like, a, um, a romance. There is, like, a subplot. There's an interest. Yes. But it's definitely not the main Focus yeah, on the story. yeah, I'm talking like true mystery novels. Yeah, like Agatha Christie. Yes, Ooh. like some Nancy Drew shit. Hell yeah! Oh my god, I love Nancy Drew. Me too. Okay, uh, wow, that was a good discussion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so good. Listen, no, I'm pleasantly surprised. I wasn't expecting you to ask that question. Well, but... it came to me, and I was like, oh my god, oh my, god. I would love <laughs> to know. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. So. This coming year, 2024, there are some well-known books coming out by authors that we all know and love that we're just excited for. Um, So first of all, at the end of January, January 30th, House of Flame and Shadow 
by Sarah J. Mass is coming out. It is the third book in the Crescent City series. And for those of you who have are all caught up on those, you know, <laughs> there was a I'm... major cliffhanger at the end of Sky and Breath. And we are just so flippin' ecstatic. I'm about to be inseparable. Wait, what's the next one? Sorry, Bride by Allie Hazelwood. She is yes. brand tonight. That's when you added. Yes, I did add this one. And sometimes I feel like it's kind of a miss from Allie. It really depends for me. It depends on the mood heavily that I'm in when I'm reading it. But February 6th, Bride comes out. And what I'm excited for is it's kind of a vampires and werewolves type beat, which is unusual for her. Love that shit. Yeah, normally she's doing kind of like contemporary. She's um, doing romance. paranormal in 2024. Yeah, which is something we just kind of branched out to in this romance. year. So, well, besides, you know, Twilight, like the classic. Yeah. But I'd, I'd like to get into more of that too, I think. Paranormal yeah. romance. So the other one that I want to read, it's called The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. So it's actually going to be like a historical paranormal. I don't know if it's romance necessarily, but um, it's based in Madrid. And so kind of going over about like what's going on with like the Spanish king um, up against like England. Um, but there's also like some like Sears and Alchemist and like that type of vibe to it. And okay. so it does go more towards like the paranormal like side of things. So I'm not a hundred percent sure kind of what the overall like vibe of it's going to be, but based off of what Lee has like promoted so far, it looks really, really good. Cause I do like a good like historical fiction. Yeah. Book. Okay. That sounds so good. And yeah. it would kind of check some boxes for what I want to read next year. And it's also not very long. It looks like, like the audio books. Yeah. audiobooks only 12 hours. Which is... And for those of like the people that have already read it, like with the advanced reading copy, it seems to be a really well-liked book. It's I mean, Lee Bardugo stars. is just a fantastic author. Yeah. Really love her stuff. I still have some beef with her, but... It, it's fine. But it's fine. That's, that's <laughs> nothing to do with the familiar. <laughs> if you want to hear our beef, go back and listen to our, our previous episodes Um, on... What the fuck is that called? Uh, Shadow and Bone. Thank you. The Shadow and Bone yeah, trilogy. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Sorry, everyone. Um, the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Which... By the way, super sad that that show is being canceled. I know. Netflix, what the fuck? Yeah. Um, I literally signed a petition to bring it back that I was going too. around on the internet. <laughs> for any too. of you who love that show and don't want to see it go away, go sign the petition to keep it. Um, Another book that I'm also so fucking excited for <laughs> is A Funny Story by Emily Henry, yes. my queen. It is going to be a, a banger. It's going to yeah. be so good. It's like a know. meet, cute, weird circumstance type thing, like forced proximity, fake dating. Like, ugh. She literally never misses. I eat that shit up. Oh, man, it's going to be so good. So basically, it's like two exes that like get in on like a little scheme together to make their exes jealous. And I'm, I bet they fall in love. Oh, my God. I hope they fall in love. I hope they fall in love, too. You know they will. I hope they do. She's the queen of romance. Oh, man. It's going to be good. That comes out in April, though. Yes, which I don't know if we said it, but The Familiar also comes out in April. Yes. And another one that comes out in April is Truly Madly Deeply by Alexandria Belfleur, who she writes a lot of um, queer romance. And right now I'm listening to the fiance farce finally mm. because I've been I have not read any so of far books. behind. Oh, she's so good. Her stuff is I've like heard great things very about it. feel good, um, cutesy romance. This one in particular is about like a really romantic, like um, like romance novelist and a divorce lawyer. Ooh. And they co-host a podcast to offer dating advice to viewers. Oh my and god. So I'm sure they end up falling in love, you know, like <laughs> I hope they fall in love. <laughs> the vibes are freaking immaculate already. And the cover is very cute. Um, if I do say so myself. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for all these books. Me too. 
Oh. One book. So last year I pledged to read like a 15 book series by Raina Kent. And <laughs> I did not read a single one of them. Yeah. This year we are pledging ourselves to the 38 book excursion that is the Black Dagger <laughs> Brotherhood. <laughs> oh my God. We're going to go ahead and commit. Um, because it was recommended to us by someone who we're going to discuss here in a moment, actually. So yeah, let's go ahead and put put our money where our mouth is this year. And just so everyone knows, this episode will actually be our last episode of 2023. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. We're leaving you. Um, no, but get ready, you guys. Get ready for the episode coming out New Year's Day 2024. Oh my god, we're so excited. Where we will be sharing our exclusive interview with author Aurora Asher. We are so freaking excited. We had so much fun. We did. Talking with Aurora. And she's she, the one who brought up the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. Yes. So we have her to thank if if and when we finish all of those. <laughs> <laughs> We're committing. But, you know, we've um, lied to you before. But we will be discussing her brand new novel, Sanctuary of the Shadow. It's the first book in the Elemental Emergence series. And it is coming out January 9th of 2024. It's so good. Um, We're going to be discussing that book in the interview, but also um, just kind of, you know, her writing in general Mm -hmm. and books that she loves to read. So (laughs) we're super special. We got an advanced copy. It's like no big deal. Um, deal. We're like, he's so cool. But you guys will be able to read it so soon. January 9th. We're also, believe it or not, going to talk about it in February (laughs) on the podcast. Yes. So you'll definitely want to read it if you want to listen to that episode. But the interview will be spoiler free. Of course, if you want to listen to that right when it comes out on the first of the year. And also let's talk about what we will be discussing in January. So in January, not only will we come out with this this wonderful interview, but the first couple books we're kicking off the year with are Fourth Wing and Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. Who happens to be from the same publishing company as our good friend Aurora. (laughs) That is so true. What a coinkydink. Oh, my God. And then, yeah, and then at the beginning of February, we'll be discussing Aurora's book, Sanctuary of the Shadow. So those are the ones that you guys need to get started on they're kind of long fourth wing and iron flame they are but they're so worth it they are but you might want to start reading now if you want to listen to those when they come out in january i'm actually listening to it right now i need to read iron flame i haven't read it at all oh man you're about (laughs) to oh you're about to have your socks blown off i'll tell you what i know well it was quite a little cliffhanger with um fourth wing so well oh boy (laughs) oh boy (laughs) (laughs) Well, you're getting me riled up. Okay. So thank you so much for listening over the past couple of years. You guys, we so appreciate you guys every day. I'm so thankful for all of you and for the ability to do this podcast. We have such a blast doing it. And we look forward to a fruitful year in 2024. We will see you next year. Have a wonderful holiday season. And as always, let's get lit. 